Hey YouTube, it's been quite a while, but the summer's finally over and work has finally given me enough breathing room to work through some of the backlog of videos. So I decided I would start with this video about the Velocio PLC, or Programmable Logic Controller. Um, you may also notice that I have a slightly different tone in my voice. I have a new microphone, which should sound a little bit nicer. Regardless of that, um, these Programmable Logic Controllers are best described as PLCs for makers. They are cheap. The entry level uh, model starts at $49. They're DIN rail mountable. Form factor has something to be desired for. The software has very powerful features for what you actually pay for it. There's uh, some comparison information on our website, which we won't get into, but you have your most basic level at $50 US, which has six in, six out. You can get models with analog inputs that are very generous for the price points. Right, 12 in, 12 out, and 12 analog inputs for $149. You can't beat that, unfortunately. Um, and similar throughout, you can get current loop inputs, you can get analog outputs, you can get differential or thermocouple inputs, you can get RS-232. Um, they do have these strange connectors. I think they are a Wago brand connector, but I haven't quite figured it out. They don't actually list it on their website, so that kind of bugs me that I have to go to them for a connector if I break one. Um, same for the power connectors. You have to buy them for... I don't even know how much. Uh, it's somewhere on the website. And, of course, you can DIN rail mount them uh, or just adhesive uh, sticky them to the inside of an enclosure. Um, they do have these branch models, which use this proprietary V-Link, and they tout this ability to distribute both the I.O., without having to wire with lots of discrete wire. Uh, they also um, tout this feature of distributing the processing power to not burden the main processor. And just the fact that their extender uses Cat5 um, twisted pair, it's probably something that's you know, low voltage differential signaling or some kind of serial interface. But regardless of which, the protocol is proprietary and it's all under the hood, black box. Okay, fine, I'll give them that. Um, they are more limited on the branch models. They don't have all the analog features. You don't have analog outputs. You're a little bit more limited, but it's not that big a deal. And you can get these breakout boards for them as well. Uh, personally, feels a little Mickey Mouse. Um, they also have these embedded versions, which just have header pins sticking out the bottom. And it's exactly the same thing um, as the regular ACE model, except they're just bare bones without the connectors. Um, and you can, of course, get this little development board, which it plugs into, yada, yada, yada. Uh, okay, so what about the actual PLC itself? So for the feature that you can actually get, right, my normal go-to would be Automation Direct. Right, this is their website. The cheapest series is the Click PLCs. Their entry levels start at a you know reasonably higher price, um, <clears throat> and at first glance, you would think that it's better to go with the Ace, right? You have USB input instead of needing to buy some proprietary cable. Um, fortunately, their software is free uh, on Automation Direct side. Um, and you have to buy the input-output modules that let you expand. So, I mean, if you wanted 12, 12 analog input-output, you'd have to buy, let's say, four channel. Okay, so you'd have to buy three of these modules, right, at 120 bucks a pop. Suddenly, your cheap little $149 version one suddenly becomes very appealing but they do have some limitations. <clears throat> Built in USB, yes. However, you can't easily interface it with other voltages. You have to give it a clean, regulated power supply, right? You need to give it five volts, period. Um, the digital outputs, right? Their um, syncing transistors or something in the data sheet here Right, so the digital outputs here 
Um, they're just a Darlington transistor array. I believe it's a 2N2003 uh, or something to that effect. Um, and if you sync too much current, there's no protection at all. Um, and you do have to wire one of the uh, VO pins to your voltage rail. So if it's 24 volts, this can handle syncing 24 volts as an NPN. However, if you don't, bad things happen, which I'll get into a little bit later. Um, but yeah, going back to the pricing, um, <laughs> when you look at the pricing and what you can get in the software for these cheap cheapo uh, click PLCs compared to the impressive feature list with things like um, motion control, with things like rotary encoder uh, control that abstracts out the, uh, I guess, the dirty business of handling a rotary encoder, you know, you get a lot of bang for your buck. But there are some limitations. Lack of protected inputs and outputs lack of expandability unless you go for the branch series and even then you still have to obey some basic tenets of electrical design which okay if you're willing to accept the limitations that's good when you order it you get the PLC and you actually get these press fit connectors hold this up for the camera 20 to 26 AWG 20 to 26 wire gauge. Um, I think they're maybe worth W-U-R-T-H, uh, branded connectors, but I can't quite find the exact match. And actually, if you order from them and you're a first-time customer, you get this uh, tool. If I can get it to focus. Maybe not. Probably not. Um, all it is is a glorified screwdriver. Uh, but it's the right size screwdriver for inserting these. Um, I guess you get a little square of adhesive tape to uh, fasten this down. And you get a power connector. It looks like all these labels are just printed and cut out on a um, just a, on a guillotine on cardstock. Um, which I'll kind of get into my feelings on this a little bit later. And then the actual PLC itself, they uh, they do put a, a little bit of contact and support information on what looks like it's an inkjet or a laser jet printout label. You know, they they have the packaging's okay, but it's well, packaging packaging is gonna get thrown out anyway. So why uh, bother? Very tight fit on the bag. Gonna get it out. Freezing. Okay, so they even make sure that you uh, install and uh, run and have the software before you connect it to your computer. So I guess there might be some issues with it uh, enumerating as a different kind of device before you get the correct drivers installed. So I'm going to take this warning label off for now. So this is what the PLC looks like. Plastic case. It's actually got USB, which is a bonus uh, for programming and uh, input-output. You have 5-volt um, power input, and then you have um, your input connectors on this side, your output connectors on this side. This model doesn't have uh, these two ports populated with components, but you've got your 12 inputs and your 12 outputs, um, and each connector has a plus V and a common ground um, pin. Uh, there's not much to look at inside here. So why do I have this? My friend ordered one of these before because if you've been paying attention to the Can Crusher series we've had it running with this PLC. Unfortunately on a very late night um, the Magic Blue Smoke was released because the input and output pins or connectors were swapped. Which you know kinda leads me into one of the first issues I have with this. The connectors are 0.1 um, inch spacing, so they're standard connectors. You just have to find the right stock number for the part. Um, but the connector width is the same. So your inputs are 
I believe, pull up floating. Sorry, not floating. Uh, I believe they have an internal pull up, uh, but the outputs are NPN Darlington transistor outputs with a current limit of 300 milliamps. If you exceed 300 milliamps, you can imagine what happened. So our uh, inputs here, um, actually, no, they might have been pulled down. I, actually, yeah, I think they're pulled down. So we had our inputs wired directly to 24 volt. When you push and close a contact, it connects 24 volts to one of these pins, which reads as a 1. But if you flip the connector onto here, 24 volts shorted directly into one of the output pins, right, at whatever current your power supply can output, suddenly you're releasing the magic blue smoke. So I have this new one to replace the broken one. And I have the uh, remains of uh, the old one, so <laughs> um, it's definitely built to a price. It's a plastic case that's glued shut, there's no fasteners. Um, and I guess there was enough heat, there was a little bit of deformation in the lid here. Kind of see there. But um, anyways, here's the board on the underside. And you can see the uh, remnants of the epoxy on the inside. Um, here's the actual board itself. So it appears to be using a Texas Instruments chip. I don't know what kind of chip that is, but presumably it's something like a 32-bit microprocessor. Something pretty fast. Um, we've got some digital I.O. front end. Uh, this is the input side, this is the output side. Remember that it's been flipped from this orientation to here. Um, so it looks like we've got our in-system programming header, um, USB, which the data pins, the differential data pins, do appear to be directly heading into this chip. So this chip does have native USB support, which is a bonus. Looks like you got a little ceramic oscillator, so no crystal, right? Thus supporting the... Uh, premise that this is built to a price. Your uh, inputs and your outputs. The output um, drivers are actually just ULN2003 Darlington transistor networks and uh, it certainly liberated enough blue smoke that traces were vaporized and uh, you know it, it would be significant work to repair if we could um, and it appears that we can't because the microprocessor actually took a hit as well. Um, there are unpopulated components here, which appear to map to the inputs and the outputs. The other models that you can buy of this, oh, and also a whole bunch of analog networks here. All right, so now that I've kind of gone through the hardware, you can see the boards are designed to be as cookie cutter as possible where you drop in certain pieces of analog front end combined with the standardized output and a single uh, processor core which is this uh, Texas Instruments ARM M4 Cortex processor um, running at like 120 megahertz or something with a multiplier in the 16 megahertz crystal. Uh, the boards are built to a price. The hardware themselves is actually pretty darn cheap. Right, you factor in the cost of the PCB, a couple one or two dollar chips, a five or ten dollar microprocessor core, um, and some you know analog op amps and a uh, an ADC for the uh, the front end, so you can do your differential inputs or whatever. Um, the hardware is pretty cheap. It's the implementation of the software that's uh, really the powerful bit. So on the Velocity website, there is this uh, section on the software. You can get this uh, light reading PDF. It's only 303 pages, right? Some good bedside reading um, with a whole bunch of tutorials to show you actually how to do everything in software. Um, the best way to describe it is it supports ladder logic for those that are familiar with ladder logic and are comfortable with it. Or you can do this flowchart style programming. Um, I'm not going to get into the software in this video. I'm just kind of sharing my notes as well as my anecdotal experiences, kind of paying it forward back to the community. Uh, there's some interesting functions here that you can't get easily on other PLCs. Um, 
there are a whole bunch of pages on these different tools. You can actually do data filtering and smoothing. That's not something you can get too easily on, uh, you know, your automation direct cheapo PLC. Um, it handles motion control as well, if the internet would work. Um, you actually tell it which inputs and outputs uh, correspond to um, the stepper output direction pin and uh, step pin, and it handles abstracting the rest. You just feed it values into a register, and it just makes the magic happen, right? It's beautifully simple. PID, if you can work out the PID values on your own, right? This function handles PID. You don't have to write a whole bunch of code. And in all honesty, PID is not that uh, fancy a feature. A lot of PLCs do have it. But the fact that you can actually, you know, play around these values in a little bit more of a real-time fashion uh, than programming it, trying it, and then coming back later to see what the result is, um, is useful. It's helpful. Um, what else? You've got uh, ramp functions for, again, kind of handling temperature or position uh, controls to ramp soft start, soft stop, things like that. Uh, again, not so easily found uh, in standard PLCs. Um, you actually have access to statistics where it can give you, uh, well, you can take inputs and spit out outputs of uh, different values into registers in memory, right? You would otherwise have to write that math function yourself. It's nothing too particularly fancy, but it's another thing there. Um, what else? Counter? I think that's the quadrature encoder. Um, no, that's just a regular plain old counter. There was something else about counters, but I can't seem to find it. Um, oh, maybe it's motion in. Uh, something. Yeah, okay, motion in, quadrature input. These blocks abstract out all of the, uh, the nitty-gritty of implementing these things. So your software programs as a flowchart, you drag and drop things. It's a little bit tricky to implement a finite state machine. It's not exactly clean or easy. The program does take up quite a bit of space, but um, to do a finite state machine, it starts to look something like this. Um, it does take some getting used to for those not familiar with programming this style and are used to discrete C code um, or whatever your flavor of programming language is, Python, Lua, whatever. So software is powerful in that it gives you a whole bunch of features. Uh, they also have this thing called vFactory, which is a USB uh, human machine interface. Now, I'll note that it's a little bit glitchy from anecdotal experience. Um, sometimes it disconnects or desyncs, especially if there are little glitches on the five volt power supply or there are any ground loops, especially with laptops, with modern uh, two pin power supplies, right? They don't have ground. Sometimes they float away from DC or uh, true earth ground and you get glitches that interrupt communication and it resets the panel. So you know, your mileage may vary, but with this vFactory HMI software, you can plug in by USB and get direct control by having buttons in, as well as gauges and dials and charts of what's going on. There are lots of nice little videos about how to use this. So, okay, the software is really the powerful side of this, not the hardware. The hardware, again, you've got these cookie cutter boards that are built to a price, and that's about it. You get what you get. There's uh, no expandability, and other than that, it's still rock solid for what it does. If you're willing to accept those, I think it's a great product. If you want the industrial reliability of a standard PLC, right, with easy wiring, with robust uh, wiring with, you know, protected inputs to some degree, um, you're going to have to look elsewhere, right? Another thing about the wiring is the form factor. This PLC sticks directly onto a DIN rail that runs horizontally. All of these connectors 
take up a huge amount of extra space to the sides and above. Right? You have to make sure you've got enough space above on the USB cable to actually connect it. We found that out the hard way and we had to move things around and it turns out we could never actually mount this thing where we wanted it to because the USB connector is in this really inconvenient place. You know, put it put it facing directly upwards, right? It's maybe a dollar extra for that style connector, right? And a little bit of a change to the enclosure molding, but it means that you can shrink the form factor down even further, right? Okay, so we don't have the nice terminal block style connectors that are directly vertical and face outwards like uh, the Click PLCs, but, you know, it's... Uh, it's something you have to live with if you want something this cheap for what it does. So that's been my experience. I'm not going to get into the software directly because I wasn't the one programming on our can crusher, but that's pretty much my experience with this. So if you like this video, please rate, subscribe, and comment. Leave, uh, leave notes in the comments below if you've used the Velocio PLCs yourselves. Um, and whether you like them or dislike them, I'm kind of curious myself because we bought one accidentally fried it because the connectors aren't keyed um, and then bought a replacement just to get the project moving forward but uh, we're kind of pensive about trying it again versus something that's a little bit more mainstream and common um, so yeah let us uh, let me know what you think